I appreciate the Lord tonight. I appreciate the opportunity to be back home. I begin to seem like all day it's been on my mind about the way Brother Denny Renfro preached last night. I thought one thing about it. If we get anything out of this, we're going to have to go back to the old way of living. The old plan of salvation. Striving, praying, seeking God to get a hold of this. If you'd like to turn with me in your Bibles tonight, I want to go to a familiar scripture. Psalms. 121, the book of Psalms 121, I want to give you time to find that. This day and time people are looking, they're searching, they're trying to find something for help for their soul, but there's only one place that we can go, and that's to the Lord. He's the only one that can help us, the only one that can give us what we need, but we'll have to seek him to get it. Psalms 121, I will lift up mine eyes under the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heaven and the earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shad upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. You may be seated. I begin to think on from where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. I thought about Mark talking about when we grew up and the older people, how they would teach us, how they would preach, and they'd get in and they'd prophesy to us, how they'd testify, and the things that they would tell us. They would say, you need to get in this. You need to pray. You need to dig. You need to strive. You need to pray until you pray." And you'll find the help that you need. I thought when I got into this, I was 12 years old when the Lord saved me. The older people taught us, you don't just stop there. Come to an altar and feel the Spirit of the Lord and He cleanses you, He saves you. You accept Him. But they said, strive on. Work on. Pray. Don't let up. They didn't just tell us that, but they lived a life in front of us that let us know right where we needed to be. About six months later, right over there, The Lord baptized me with the Holy Ghost, the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. He gave me something to work with, and it's kept me for 44 years. To say I've always been on the mountaintop, I can't say that. To say that I've always been right where I needed to be, I can't say that. But I can tell you this much. 
If I got any help from the Lord, I had to be praying and seeking Him, living in a manner that His Holy Ghost, His anointed power could get upon me, could teach my heart what I needed to know. My help comes from the Lord, and your help will come from the Lord. But you'll have to live holy to get it. Just anything ain't going to do. He will keep you. He will preserve you. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's a God that doesn't fail. He's a God that's always on time. And he made a promise unto us. He said, I'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. He never leave us or never forsake us. But he'd go all the way, even to the end of the world. My help comes from the Lord. Where does your help come from? The word said that he was the same yesterday, today, and forever. It changeth not. It's always the same. If any changing's done, it's in us. And I can't find where the plan of salvation has changed. It's still in old time close living. Walking upright before God. Keeping the commandments of God. Living by the truth. Which is the word of God. My help comes from the Lord. He's the only one that can give us the help that we need. I thought so many times. Brother Stan... Things begin to bother me in this life. Go through a trial. A little bit of trouble. Be all by myself. And begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to cry out to Him. And feel something sweet. Begin to come right down in my soul. And nobody there but me and the Lord. Something began to talk and begin to tell me what I needed. Something that let me know for sure that He still reigns, that it's still real. A Holy Ghost that does not fail, and it comes from God. My help comes from the Lord. He's got help for his people. He's, never, he's not changed. He's not went nowhere. The church world today almost acts like it's a fairy tale. Something that people's made up in their minds. But I'm glad to know, Brother Isom, that the Lord did I serve it's still just as real as it was the day that he saved me. The day that he sanctified me, filled me with his Holy Ghost. I'm glad of something that I know is real that does not fail. We need to get back to the old way of living. The Bible said, seek ye the old path. And when you find it, Walk therein. It didn't say it's a thing of the past. It's just man's tradition. But it said it was the plan of salvation. The word of God that proves itself. My help comes from the Lord. 
He never fails me. And He'll never fail you if you'll put your trust in Him. Church, we need to trust in the God we serve. I could ask probably anybody in this building tonight. Has the Lord ever done anything for you? Has He ever moved for you? Has He ever spared your life when you didn't even know trouble was ahead? Has He ever made the way out of no way? Has he ever delivered you? Then why do we sit so quiet? Why do we act like it's a thing of the past? I don't care where you go. About every church you walk into, they're just sitting quiet. Churches that used to get in and shout to victory, prophesy, carry out the signs, do the gifts and callings of God, they've got quiet. You did run well. Who did hinder you? What happened? Has your God changed? Has He went anywhere? My help comes from the Lord. He ain't never failed me, and He won't fail you. We need to put our ideals and opinions aside, and we need to trust God. We need to put our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength in serving God, believing upon Him, letting Him teach our hearts the things that we need to know. Quit worrying about everybody else, but let God teach you what you need to know. We can look around and by the signs of time, This thing's winding up. The Bible talked about a great falling away. Have you ever seen a time like this in your life? I ain't. People walking away from it. Giving up on it. Living just any way. The Spirit of God gets on somebody and they're charismatic. But let me tell you something. This thing ain't changed. This word is not changed. My help comes from the Lord. There's something that's genuine that comes down from the Lord that no man can tame. It's something that's real, something that's positive, something that will uplift, encourage, strengthen. But it comes from God Almighty. Nothing else will do. My help comes from the Lord. That Holy Ghost ain't changed. The plan of salvation's not changed. Why have we? Why are we? When it said that at least the days be shortened. Be no flesh saved. Yeah. 
said he would deceive the very left if possible. People's forgot where their help comes from. They forgot where the power of God comes from. It comes from God. It ain't going to change, church. And the only way you're going to get a hold of the old-time way is to dig and pray and seek God. Get a hold of this on your knees, seeking God. It's still real. That to use to move on the prophets to read you off like a book and them know nothing about you is the same prophecy. It's still real. It ain't changed. It's still moving. But we're going to have to seek God to get in the deep things. People forgot about it. If you come out and you sing a few dry songs and the preacher gets up, and you do well if you get an Amen. Make an altar call and about half the church hits the door. It ain't just here. It's in my church too. I don't preach to my church no different than I'm preaching right now. This thing is close. And it's holy. And if we don't walk in a righteous manner before God, and trust in that where our help comes from. Begin to dig down and get a hold of the deepness that comes along with this. When he returns, there's going to be a lot of sad people. People that thought they had the goods that they was going to go right in. Every eye is going to behold Jesus. He's the judge. But the Bible said only the pure at heart will see God. If that heart's not where it needs to be, and there's any little thing in there, it said a pure heart. You'll not see God. And if you can't see God, you ain't going to heaven. Truth will set you free. And free indeed. This thing's winding up, church. Every day, there's another sign showing the end of time. Men lovers of self more than lovers of God. Parents turning against their children. Children against their parents. People going in places of business and just for no reason at all murdering people. All of these things that he said would happen, it's here. I see it. I see all kinds of things. In the business I'm in, it never ceases to amaze me. Some of the things that I see. But it don't change my mind not one bit on what I believe. Because I know where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. It's real. That power of God is just as real as it was on the day of Pentecost. 
when he began to move in the upper room, poured out his Holy Ghost, they began to stagger around like drunk men, began to speak in other tongues. It's the same. That same anointing that opened the blinded eyes, that raised the dead, healed the leopard men, let Legion go free of the demons that was in him and made him whole. Do you know what the Bible said? You read down from the five Bible signs and it says all of these that he would let us do, all of these things that Jesus done, he said, greater will I let you do. Have you ever stopped and thought about that? I'm afraid we're not even close to half of what he done. Have you laid hands on anybody and their eyes been opened up and then blind? Have you raised the dead? I've seen it done. Right there. Have you seen the lame get up and walk? Run through the city? I'm not seeing it. What happened? Did we forget where our help come from? My help comes from the Lord. My strength in the time of trouble comes from my God. Church, we need to get back to the old way of living. And I'm talking about holy living. The Bible said without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And it's not talking about denomination. But it's talking about being holy. Living clean and free from sin. Walking in a manner that's upright with the Lord. Close living. Praying without ceasing. Seeking the Lord in a close manner. You talk to people about the Spirit of God and they look at you like you're crazy. Don't have a clue what you're talking about. What's teaching our young people? What will the next generation know? Will they even know what this says? Come on, elders. Is that true anointing of God getting on us? To where these young people coming up can see the power of God? can see anointing it comes down from above. That when it begins to holler, begins to groan, it'll make you feel like the hair on your head is standing up.
Send cold chills all over you. And you know to stand to attention and listen. My help comes from the Lord. I've been thinking about when I was just a small child sitting back in the back. The music could be going and people begin to lift up their hands and begin to praise the Lord. And there'd be a sound get in this building. I know what that sound was. And I'd stand up and I'd watch. And when that began to move through the building, I could tell you right when the people was going to start dancing under the power of God because of what I could hear and I could feel and me a child. There was something that would get in this building that just about everything on this pulpit and down around the bottom there would go to shouting at one time. It sounded like music. That same power of God is still real today. But we're going to have to realize where our help comes from. We're going to have to stop getting back to the old way of praying and seeking God. This natural world has got too busy. We're letting too many things come into our lives that's keeping the power of God off of us. The church is bickering over stuff that's foolishness. Things that used to be something I never even thought of. They're allowing it to take over. We better be seeking this out for ourselves. The Bible said seek it out through fire, praying until we feel the fire, till the Holy Ghost and fire comes down. It said to work out your own salvation through fear and trembling. Do we fear? Do we fear? It's still real. It's still holiness. The plan of salvation is still the same. My help comes from the Lord. He never changes. And I don't want to change either. The only way I want to change, Brother Mark, is to get closer to God. I never want to lose my fear in serving God. Not that I'm afraid of my God, but I'm afraid of what will happen if I lose Him. My mom had a saying, and she said did it me, to me this many times. She'd say, I'm not afraid of living too close. She said, I'm afraid I won't live close enough. <laughs> Are we afraid that we'll fail the Lord? Fail that to where our help comes from. 
we better get back to the old way of living. And that's striving and seeking God. It ain't changed. It ain't going to change. And if we make it to heaven, we're going to have to live holiness. We're going to have to plumb the line. Keep the commandments of God. Live by the truth, which is the Word of God. We got to keep this from lid to lid. And live by just what it says. Nothing else is going to do. It's real. If it ain't changed, why have you? When's the last time you felt the power of God? When's the last time you felt that get on you and take you to another world? Stag you around like a drunk man. Begin to move on you and begin to teach you things. Open your understanding to things. It ain't changed. If you ain't felt it in a while, you better get to where you can. You know what the Bible said? It said the gifts and callings are without repentance. If you at one time prayed into prophecy, you better have it moving in your soul when he comes. If he's give you the gift to sing with, you better be singing. If he's called you to preach, then you better make sure that he's called you. You can't just lay it down and walk away. It ain't something you can just lay aside. The gifts and callings are without repentance. It's required. I'll never forget when I prayed into prophecy, I wanted it so bad. I thought it was just such, going to be such a great, great thing. And it is. I was young. The Lord moved on me to prophesy to a man. And he railed back on me. I was young, young Christian. And I thought, and I never told nobody this, but just me and the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm not going to do that anymore. It's too hard. I didn't like it. Hurt my feelings. I was young. I was standing right there. And Sister Sue Eves walked across the floor and prophesied to me and said, once you've prayed into this, you cannot escape. You're talking about cutting you right where you're living. I know that I couldn't just throw it away. And I learned real quick that I had to begin to pray and strive. To keep it moving in my soul. I had to go where my help comes from. And I had to seek him close.
you'll face trouble. You'll bear persecution. The enemy will come at you in many different ways. But if you'll trust God, He'll make the way for your escape every time. But you'll have to seek Him and trust Him. His way is the right way. We're nothing. The Bible said that man's wisdom was foolishness. In the sight of God, it don't amount to nothing. This comes from God. This comes from praying and seeking Him and being obedient to it. The Bible said obedience was better than sacrifice. I ain't seen very many people shouting and amening. And Will the truth hurt you? That word right there will cut you coming and going. It'll set you out where you're living. This right here is the plan of salvation. It's the road map right here. You want help from God? Begin to read His Word. Begin to trust in the Word. Live by what it tells you. Move up to it. Dig. Seek the Lord. And let Him teach you these things for yourself. It ain't changed, church. That that used to move around here, it ain't changed. It ain't going to change. Do you know what he said he would do to the slothful servant? Said he would bind him hand and foot and cast him into the fire. Do you know where the slowful servant's going to be? Right down there with the drunkard, the thief, the backbiter, the liar, those that steal, kill. So we better get in a hurry. We better get on fire. We better be seeking God. Because time's winding up. We're going somewhere. This thing is going somewhere. The Bible said, same as in the day of Sodom and Gomorrah, with the coming of the Son of Man, told all the things that happened, you ever seen a time that we're there? And I'm not so sure that it ain't worse. Same as in the day of Noah. They mocked the old man. Said he was crazy. Why well, it ain't never rained. Talking about rain. Water come up from the mist in the ground. But he was obedient to God. Kept on building. Following the instruction. Doing as the will of God. They went on their wicked ways. They were evil people. 
They went on about their wicked ways until the rain began to fall and the door was shut. That old song says, don't let that door of mercy close on you. You better find out where your help comes from. And you better seek after it with everything you've got. Because this thing is winding up. There ain't no use of sugarcoating it and tell you can live any way you want to. Just come on. But we better be minding God. Getting a hold of the deep things of God to carry us through. Because one day we'll shake ourselves and we'll find that we ain't got no power. We better get a hold of something to get us out of the ground or up one. Because it's just about over. Things are happening. It's porting toward home. And we better be seeking after the one we get our help from. And that's the Lord. He ain't went nowhere, church. That was going on around here 44 years ago is still right today. That plan of salvation that the old people taught us about is just as real as it was then. Satan's been on his job since the beginning of time. But that don't make it change. The same thing that God told all the people in the Old Testament, how they had to live and what they had to do is still right. When Jesus Christ come to this earth as a babe, grew up and was hung on a cross, laid in a tomb and rose on the third day, and went up to sit on the right hand of the Father, it's still just as real today as it was the day that he ascended up into heaven to sit on the right hand of the Father. And you know what they were preaching? His, his time is at hand and it's even at the door. What are they preaching today? He's soon coming. And it's even at the door. It's the same message. I thought about this has probably been 20 years ago, I guess now, or more. I was at a sister's house. And she put a tape in of somebody preaching. I don't even remember who the man was now. But I didn't forget what he was preaching. It was a tape, a cassette tape, so you know how long ago that was. And you know what he was preaching? He was preaching on the end times. How that things was happening that let us know that the Lord was soon coming. How that men had left the plan of salvation. The love of many had waxed cold. All the things that we're seeing happen today was what that man was preaching 20 or 25 years ago and that was taped way before that. We're still preaching the same thing today but we're seeing the evidence of it. 
We're seeing it happen before us. It lets me know. I don't know when he's coming. According to the word, only God himself, not even Jesus knows. According to what the Bible says. But it told us of some signs. Things that would happen that would let us know that it was nigh at the door. It's here, church. Things are happening every day. Are you ready? Are you prepared to meet God? Are you saved, sanctified? Have you been born again? If the Lord would call you today, would you be ready to go? You better know for sure. Because he's soon coming. It's even at the door. I appreciate the opportunity to get to preach at home one more time. The Lord ain't been nothing but good to me. And I want to do my best to please Him. Because I want to go home. I want to make it. I want to be ready. Come on, Brother Mark. Brother Mark said, make an altar call. Somebody might come give us a song. If you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord, if you don't know Him, you're searching for something, you can find it right here at this altar. Yes. There's help for those that ask for it. That's right, brother. If the Lord is dealing with your heart, don't put it off. Humble yourself. Come and get down to an altar prayer. And let the Lord change your life. Let Him cleanse you, make you whole. He can save and sanctify you. It takes Him. Shaking my hand ain't going to help you a bit. But humble in your heart before God and trust it in Him and accept in Him, His Son, Jesus Christ. That can help you. That can save you. This altar is open and it's open to you. Everybody that will, come pray.